After 21 years of hearing the inaccuracies of a certain scene in Jurassic Park 3, it was rather intriguing to hear the many quotes that Dominion would introduce scientifically accurate dinosaurs. And more interesting, I was wondering how people would take more realistic dinosaurs. But man, was that prologue so underwhelming. From time-traveling dinosaurs, outdated views on some, and simply fixing just wrists and sparse coverings of feathers, it really didn't live up to the expectation. But one monster stood out, and that was the abomination that is Giganotosaurus. The Giganotosaurus was originally discovered in 1993, and today we look at how it went from dinosaur to movie monster in less than 20 years. So welcome back everybody to Fossil Frenzy, or at least a rather unorthodox episode of this series. So usually this series we like to focus on a specific specimen, like we did back in our Sue the T-Rex Experience episode. But with how the Giganotosaurus was portrayed in the Jurassic World Dominion prologue in front of Fast 9, we knew we had to cover it. While the original idea seemed to be to make accurate dinosaurs, the team behind the design has gone to some lengths to make the Giganotosaurus and the Tyrannosaurus look absolutely different. The idea here is two large carnivores will look the same to the general public without some spicing up of the Giganotosaurus. Of course, this is even with series like Walking with Dinosaurs, the had a Rex and a Giga, as well as a Rex and a Tarbosaurus, and it went fine. But with that said, let's take a look at how this Giganotosaurus was changed to a movie monster. So outside the obvious teleportation from South America to North America and millions of years, the attribute that I noticed first was a strange hump or cell midway down its back. At first I thought it was an angle, but when seen from a wider shot, the cell is super clear. It seems something more akin to Acrocanthosaurus or Concavenator, especially when shown next to the skeletal reconstruction as seen here. And while you can see, yeah, the dorsal spines are a little bit longer than most theropod dinosaurs, definitely nowhere near the exaggeration as seen in the prologue. So the next thing you might notice is just the amazing size that this monstrosity has. Now, since it's supposed to be the Rex that was cloned to eventually make Rexy, we have a good estimation about how big this Rex is. Now Rexy, depending on the source, is between 40 and 45 feet long, somewhere between 16 and 20 feet tall, which is larger than a Tyrannosaurus anyway. But as we look into the Giganotosaurus, it clearly towers over and is much longer, and it looks like it's maybe not double, but quite significantly heavier than Tyrannosaurus. When in reality, the Giganotosaurus is actually lighter than Tyrannosaurus Rex. So if we look at the holotype specimen MUCPVCH1, for noise originally estimated about 7.53 short tons or 6.83 metric tons. Now obviously this is the stated size usually for Giganotosaurus, even though there is a larger specimen that's not significantly larger, but larger enough to maybe get up to 8 or 9 short tons. Now, in 2020, Lermandi et al. actually calculated again using NSG, which is Neutral Specific Gravity, to get a weight about 8.14 short tons or 7.3 metric tons. Again, this is a smaller, more complete holotype. When compared to Asu or Scotty, they both are in the range of 9.91 to 10.03 short tons, obviously a little bit shorter in actual metric tons. And again, you can just see it here with these two almost scale models of a Tyrannosaurus and Giganotosaurus, more in a more realistic take to both. And well, the scale patterns, you know, I can't judge that or coloration. It just seems very off compared to what one would expect from quote unquote the most realistic dinosaurs yet portrayed in Jurassic World. Now, originally when Nanmu had released their Giganotosaurus, I had some hope. While it didn't look 100% scientifically accurate, it at least shared scientific accuracies while mixing that Jurassic Park charm. 
it is nowhere near what we're getting. I mean, it's almost like they took a Godzilla model and threw it up on the screen. I don't think people would have all these issues had a lot of these quotes not come out, how much more accurate they are than previous movies, this and that. And so I think that's where a lot of the judging is going to come in. Especially when you're like, we're going for scientific accuracy, and then you have like a hodgepodge of time-traveling dinosaurs. You got this giganosaurus that looks like a mix between a few different, like acrocanthosaurs, maybe a little bit of concavenator, maybe some Godzilla. And I get it, they're trying to maybe blend it more to look like the Indominus Rex. Since the Indominus had a little bit of Giganotosaurus DNA in it, even though it had like six different Abeliosaurs, a Therizinosaur, different modern animals, etc. But yeah, I mean, just so far, have not been impressed by this design. And, you know, once the movie comes out, we can see a better look at it, maybe in a little bit better lighting. And we'll see maybe if the design will change for a modern day, like when they clone the Giganotosaurus, will it change at all? I think we're just going to get the same design, maybe a little bit different color. Like I said, this is just a shorter, a little bit unorthodox look into the Jurassic World Giganotosaurus that we briefly saw. Like I said, very briefly, hopefully once the movie comes out, you know, I can come out and say, hey, I'm sorry, I was wrong. But it just seems strange, and I feel like general audiences would be able to tell two dinosaurs apart uh, with the T-Rex and the Giganotosaurus. But if there's one thing that hopefully this time-traveling battle does, is it actually just puts to rest the whole argument of scientific inaccuracy in Jurassic Park 3. Because yes, while they are inaccurate, they're also frog-infused DNA dinosaurs on an island in modern day. Whereas this Giganotosaurus vs. Trinosaurus battle supposedly is including a time-traveling and distance-traveling Giganotosaurus fighting a T-Rex 65 million years ago. Yet, at the end of the day, these are just movies and they're not supposed to be documentaries. And so, while there was those quotes about being the most scientifically accurate, perhaps they just didn't say 100% scientifically accurate dinosaurs. And so, if you like Jurassic Park 3, or if you like the Giganotosaurus design and are excited for Jurassic World Dominion, that's okay. But let us know in the comments below, what are you most excited for in the new Jurassic World movie? Thank you all for joining us on another episode of Fossil Frenzy. And let us know in the comments below, what do you think of the new Giganotosaurus design? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's as close as they could have made it to fit the Jurassic Park universe? If you want to see more Fossil Frenzy, including Sue the T-Rex experience, click that link to your left. If you want to see more of what we're doing here at Cools Paranormal, click that link to your right. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe.